Hello guys and welcome from Switzerland, Bad Ragaz. My name is Christoph Bürkamp, I'm reporter and editor with BBB and next to me, the one and only <laughs> former BBB player and German international, oh. Patrick Obermoyela. Way too kind, thank you, hi yeah. Christoph. Thanks for taking your time, man. Of always course, good to see you. always good to see you too. And right with us, the sun comes out, we, uh, we, we have to admit it was raining just right yeah. a minute before we started here. And that brings us to the first question. How would you sum up uh, the training camp so, so far? far? I mean, obviously, as every year, perfect condition. The pitch is in, in a great condition. Uh, Weather-wise, it's, it's a little different yeah. than we used to because yeah. usually the weather is kind of good here. Some rainy days, but mostly, mostly sunny. This time it's a little more rain than we yeah. would have liked, but um, that gives a little bit of cooling to the hardworking guys. So overall, it's again, a perfect place to, to prepare for, for a long and hopefully successful season. Yeah. And for the one of us of you who tune in from Germany and wonder, why the heck are these two talking in English? <laughs> that is because we've got plenty of questions from yes. Asia, from all over the world, from fans today, and we're happy to answer them. But we'll skip into that in a minute. Before that, we should mention that there is one new guy yeah. on the pitch today. I think most of you have been waiting for him. It's Daniel Malen from uh, Holland, from uh, Eindhoven. But uh, we should also mention that he's allowed to train with us. Right, but there's a permission. Some little some Things. minor details to be uh, solved between the player and his uh, yeah. former club, uh, PSV. But uh, he is allowed to train with us and we're really excited to, to see him here for the first time. And yeah, the, the official announcement will be, will be done once yeah. uh, everything is sorted out. We'll follow soon, hopefully. Yes. But we'll uh, obviously, we'll try to find him with our cameras here every now and then. And you'll get your first impressions live here on our channels from Don Um So, I mean, Perfect conditions, we've uh, mentioned that. Um, a lot of young guys with yeah. us this time, and that is obviously due to the Euros, isn't it? Of course, uh, we have a lot of players still uh, in, uh, in vacation mode after they played the tournament this summer. And that's why young talents of our club from the under 19 and under 23 team have the chance to, to show their qualities here. And uh, we do that basically every year, but it's a little more this, this time around uh, because of the tournament, that's, mm. that's right, yeah. I think one question most fans have in mind right now is is that a very tricky or difficult pre-season run up to well a challenging season because we got yeah. the first competitive game in less than uh, two weeks in right. the german cup that right. we obviously want to well at least go of to course, the final again of course, yeah. right and then it's the bundesliga against eintracht frankfurt so with say Mats Hummels and Emre Can not here yet and the likes of Jude Bellingham right. and Thomas uh, Delaney, Thomas Delaney um, our Belgian the, players. The, the Belgian yeah. players. Um, so how difficult is that for the new uh, trainer uh, team, for the new head coach Marco Rosa to get these guys yeah. on and, track? And you mentioned one more big and major detail, there's a new coach as well with a new plan. True. So it's not like more of the same and these guys know exactly what they're coming to when they're yeah. coming. Uh, they have to learn something new as well. Marco Rosa has to get uh, to know them as well a little yeah. bit. So it's, it is overall probably a tricky preseason, but there is a lot of quality on both sides, coaching side and, and the team, that they will sort that out really quickly, I will mm. say, and um, adapt to, to, to the new circumstances. So um, it's always good to have the full squad there to work on, on, on tactical stuff, to work, you know, to, to, to get to know each other uh, pretty, pretty quick. But they will sort it out really quick since they have a, a huge, huge quality. Mm. And, and Marco Rosa is a guy who's talking a lot to the guys, probably before they're here already on the phone telling them yeah. this and that. So they, they're going to be prepared, they're going to show up and then it's going to be uh, hopefully 100% really, really fast. Mm. From your experience, I mean, these new ideas, new tactics, new sort of ways to behave yeah. during the match, how long does that sink in? How long does it take to sink in for you to actually show it on the pitch? <laughs> It depends on how, how big of a change it is. I mean, these guys played probably every system there is uh, some, yeah. somewhere in their yeah. career. And the young guys, they, they're learning a lot of tactical systems on right. the way up. So um, it's, it's all within, within them. But now you have to figure out the, the automisms, you know, it, it has to, to automatically come out of you yeah. on the pitch. That's, that's something <laughs> you try to shape in, in the preseason usually. But too. Oh, balls are flying. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. ball and almost hit little, our director, little, little, but I can tell joke. you he's still well. Yeah, yeah. and it <laughs> was Marco well. Roy sending that ball. Okay. And wow. 
always always greetings a, a from little, the captain <laughs> <laughs> little joke on his uh, side now um i think it, it will take some time to be really fluent in everything but uh, as i said there's a lot of quality yeah. uh, in in this team and, and the players have the quality to really fast adapt everything that's uh, that's asked from them okay so us two, we're going to step back a little, yes. answer some questions from you fans, and we'll focus on, on the action on the pitch with our cameras here. So let's check out some questions. And the first one comes in from Korea, and that's um, directed to you, Ovo. Share oh, okay. a funny story you had while being player for BVB. So a go funny. on then. <laughs> First of all, uh, uh, a big hi and welcome to the stream to all the Korean fans. Uh, yeah. Since the question is, is coming from that side. Actually, I, I was in Korea. It was my, my second uh, international game for the German national team. I played in Busan. Okay. So I was in Korea already. And uh, yeah, a funny story. I always, uh, um, always like to tell it. Uh, it wasn't the best story on my behalf, but uh, overall a, a very funny one and a, a positive one. When we played the cup, uh, I think it was quarterfinals. I'm not sure. Or, or, or the or best the, of 16, the best I don't of 16, know. I reckon, yeah. um, against Dusseldorf. It was a, a cup game and I played after a long, long period of injury t uh, time. And um, I got sent off the pitch. Uh, yeah really fast after 24 yeah. minutes i think the team went on t uh, uh, went on to win that game in in extra time and penalties yeah but um the funny story was on the way back and we always it was an away about game obviously. it was an away game yeah. and on the way back i i said okay i have to make it up uh, to to the guys in in some kind of way since uh, they they had to carry uh, the load for me and um, so I invited them I we stopped with the with the team bus on the way back to Dortmund with the team bus we stopped at a very famous um, I would say fast food chain <laughs> <laughs> and I invited I invited everyone uh, for a nice late dinner after the game and the first one who pushed everybody out the way to be the first to to put this order to place this order was actually Jurgen Klopp so ah, he was really really eager brilliant. to finally eat at that famous fast food okay. restaurant after we always talking about healthy uh, yeah. nutrition and stuff that was um, that was all out of the window yeah, on that I day i wonder what Dennis Rota our chef says about that he, wa he wasn't there at the time i think okay. i don't i'm not sure if he if he was there already but uh, yeah right. he 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 looked away probably yeah, does away. does a bvb team bus fit through a drive <laughs> no it was not it was not a drive through we had actually to step out and, and now just imagine that is the, <laughs> the professional team of Borussia Dortmund yeah. with the tour bus stopping in front of that fast food restaurant everybody gets out fully clothed in bvb clothing yeah. heads into this uh, fast food restaurant and, and places orders like i don't know how many burgers there were yeah. and stuff that that was a picture for for the ages nowadays you would have like six instagram live streams <laughs> yeah, seven yeah. tiktok nowadays live streams but, but from one burger instagram restaurant. wasn't there yet yeah, yeah yeah instagram wasn't there yet there was a little bit of uh, of facebook going on but not as uh, yeah. as it is today probably uh, very helpful actually yeah. so <laughs> it was it was a story that that kept kept quiet brilliant brilliant, brilliant. so well thanks a lot for that question from korea yes. and here's another one from korea directed to you over yeah uh, Compared to when you were a BBB player, what has changed now? I mean, the game is obviously the same, probably a little more intense, a little, more, a little bit faster. Um, but every, every, every little bit surrounding that is, uh, is way more professional, way more organized. It was really, really good in my time as well, but it, it's even better now. Mm. Everything is taken care of, everything is thought through. Um, so the players really can just work on, on, on their skills and, and don't have to think about anything else too much. That's mm. maybe a little change. And the team is quite young. I mean, we, we talked about those, those young players. You see so much more young players in every team, actually, yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. the Bundesliga and in European football. Yeah. So uh, the, the talent, the, the scouting, the development of, of youth is probably way, way faster and way, mm. way more professional than that what we see on the, on the pitch. Mm. But other than that, it's the same game, the same passion that these guys are living on the pitch. And um, yeah. I'm always, I'm always asking you, like, when you look at a training right now, is that totally alien to what you no. used to train? No, 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 no. It's, it's not. I mean, in preseason, we did probably a little bit more running, just like okay. actually just running without yeah. the ball. These guys are not doing that too much anymore. Okay. Everything involves like 
like a little game, like a little, yeah. you know, pana or a little, uh, eh, pana, a little uh, rondo, yeah. like a, a game in, in a circles or, or yeah. some kind of form. And um, so basically everything they do involves the ball. Obviously, that leads to a good technical development that yeah. all the players have. That's probably average wise a little better than than in my time we had guys that were they they came out of the athletic department more okay. i would say yeah, and yeah. we had some guys they came at the, from the technical department yeah. more with the ball and nowadays almost every player has everything so that's a little different but um, no the the games they do in, in practice the 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 exercises are pretty much the same but i would say a little bit more intense from yeah, from yeah, what yeah. you have to do what I find curious is that when you look back at the days of, say, uh, Michael Ballack or Stefan yeah. Efmeg, they, they always said, like, the best age in your football career is when you're sort of almost 30. <laughs> I think that has definitely yeah, that changed, has changed, right? That has shifted a lot uh, since, since this sport is so much more physical, hmm. intense. The intensity is just higher. It's... it's it's faster running it's not more running really it's it's almost the same distance but there are a lot of a lot more sprints involved in that yeah. game nowadays and uh i mean age does something to to a body i can yeah. tell you that yeah. and so the best age when when you say it would be the end 20s 28 or something like that it's probably now 24 or something so yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. it shifted because there's so much more ask physically of you uh, yeah. on the pitch it's it's like um, obviously we're doing a lot of interviews with with uh, our players, but also with our staff. And I did some research on our um, uh, um, assistant uh, coach Alexander yeah. Zickler, mm -hmm. and I was stunned to find out he ended his professional career aged thirty seven. Right, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean that's and good, he had good a history of injuries. He had so. a in, uh, history of in, uh, injuries, but sometimes that leads to a little bit off time during your career, yeah. which you can add on the in the end, depending on how how I mean really big that injuries were be, or yeah. how much of them is still left once you get back on the pitch. Yeah, right. So um, sometimes that leads to a couple more extra years since you had a, a break every now and yeah. then. But um, he's a he's a striker. He was a, a physically a, a fit guy. He was always like that. Yeah. He was uh, pretty lightweight. Yeah. Uh, that sure. leads uh, to, to m I think, minor... Uh, the, the German word is verschleiß. Do you know what, ah, what the English well, word is? Uh, he's sort of not that worn out. Well, he's not... Yeah, exactly, and uh, so so maybe that makes sense. Guess, Usually, it's goalkeepers yeah. that get up to almost forty, since they're not running as much yeah. as the players do. I can say he got some uh, tremendous uh, uh, kudos from me yesterday because yesterday, after yesterday's afternoon training session, it was raining cats and dogs, yeah. and buses were available for the players and the staff to bring them back. Almost all of them denied <laughs> and took the bike back. He actually ran back, and it, it wow. he, and it, he took a sort of really big turn yeah. so it wasn't that he headed straight back so i think he did some some extra miles there in the yeah. pouring rain I was yeah like, he's, wow, he's, he's still fit, he's man. still fit and if you compare him to marco rosa who's obviously fit as well but yeah. he is a little bit i mean his knees are a little bit more worn out i would say than yeah. uh, than Ziegler. so no i mean obviously Ziegler does something for his body still and uh yeah he probably okay. did that while he was still playing and active as a professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks for that question. We 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 uh, headed off a bit, but we're going back, returning to your fans' question, and there's another one from Korea, a third one, and that is for you, Over. <laughs> okay. What would you like to do when visiting Korea? Oh, there are so many nice places. Uh, during our our uh, virtual world tour, we we had a little right. bit of a, a picture challenge to, yeah. to figure out what places there were or where they are. And there were nice pictures from places in in Korea, from uh, from even from the seaside, like yeah. coast coast and beaches and stuff. They do have beaches there. If you're not aware of that, yeah, yeah. Sure. And of course, there is a lot of history. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. and I'm a food lover, so I would travel <laughs> like everywhere where there is uh, prominent or, or, or popular uh, Korean food. I would love to try that since I overall love the Asian kitchen and Korean kitchen as well. So yeah, yeah that's I, I mean all over the place. As I mentioned, I was there once in Busan, but that was everything I saw uh, from from uh, Korea. So. There's still some places left, some, right. some open spaces on the map. Okay. Uh, a question from Japan. Um, what do you think is the team's target for the new season? So, another welcome and hello to Japan yeah. and all the fans uh, from there watching. Um, it has to be 
to have a better season than last year. And we won a title last year, if you do recall True. that, and, uh, and finished as a Champions League qualifier. There's a little, a little bit room left to improve, and the team, I think, has a, a huge, huge quality. Yeah. Uh, and when it all comes together, there's a, a championship available. Yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be difficult. There's always Bayern heading for that, maybe a surprising other team, or Leipzig, the usual ones up there. But um, yeah. this team has all the tools they need to, to have a really successful season, maybe finishing up with a, with a German championship. Yeah. I think I can quote our captain, uh, Marco Reusi, who did uh, a round of interviews uh, a few days back. And uh, the word he always used was consistency. Exactly. They need consistency. Yeah, because they showed everything last season as well. I mean, the, the finish of the season was, was brilliant, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. The last, I would say, six, eight seven, weeks. Seven in a row? Seven in a row. Yeah. yeah, I would say six, eight, eight weeks were perfect in the end. Yeah. But consistency, you have to perform on that level. 34 games to to become the real uh, uh, real champion, the German yeah. champion. And uh, that's that must be the goal. But the quality yeah. is there. So here's, here's another uh, surprising football question from Japan mm -hmm. um, about the Olympics. Who do you think will win the gold medal in football at the Olympics? I mean, obviously, I hope that is our team, uh, yeah. uh, uh, the German team. That yeah. would be fantastic. But but Stefan Kunz, yeah. just uh, and under a, and 21. A, an exciting European young champion. team. So yeah. there's uh, interesting players. Uh, Max Kruse just uh, did something really, yeah. really crazy. Yeah. But that's another story. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, you have big, Big uh, teams like Brazil with yeah. a strong, what about strong Spain? squad. Spain a strong squad. Many players that are, that played the the, the European yeah, Championships yeah, yeah. and now trying to get a gold yeah. medal uh, uh, on uh, on their backs. Uh, yeah. It's they are strong teams. So probably those two will Brazil will or Spain. Yeah. I would say okay. Yeah, I'd, I would, I'd say that. Well, I'd go with that. Next question from Japan. Uh, no, sorry. Um, where uh, are we heading? Vietnam. Vietnam. We're going Vietnam. to Vietnam. Hello, Vietnam. Hello, Vietnam. What does the yellow wall mean to you? It's <laughs> goosebumps right away. <laughs> just, just you know. We're missing it. Oh, we're yeah, missing of, it of a course. lot. First guys. of all, we're missing we're missing everybody who is uh, part of the the black and yellow family yeah. in the stadium and elsewhere in the world. Um, the yellow wall is is it's just something different. It's it's really really something that that grew on me. That that that. That has a big place in my heart because it's it's one of a kind, yeah. and it it really really says everything there is that you need to know about BVB and the BVB fans. It's it's passion, it's love, it's you know, it's it's everything. And when you come come out out of the tunnel onto the pitch, and you look to the left, and there is this yellow wall, and they're cheering for you, and sometimes they're kicking in your behind to to push you even more on the pitch right. that's that's just something else and i would wouldn't uh, uh, or I, i'm happy to to have uh, to have lived through that and and to have experienced that and yeah it's something really special to me yeah dear friends in vietnam on a personal note i'm a season ticket holder on that stand for 22 <laughs> years now and i can tell you from my mates all of us our weekends feel pretty empty without yeah. that we do enjoy it a lot it is a very well important part of our lives because it, it's not only that I think we're sort of transporting something to the team, but the team also tr transports something to us. Yeah. So it is sort of give and take in a way, right. you yeah. know. And so. really, uh, and I can tell you that as a, from a player's perspective, those guys are missing it, really, really uh, missing it because it gives them so much on the pitch as well. So it's, it's both sides actually uh, get something right. from that. Yeah, true. So about the next question, I'm curious how much you're actually, in, in terms of your insights, you want to give away. Um, <laughs> because uh, this one is, how do you think BBB will line up next season? I mean, Marco Rosa, you never Ooh. know. He used to play even with two strikers in, in, in yeah, Gladbach. Yeah, in Gladbach. So it, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, there was a lot of talking about the system last season and, uh, you know, why we're playing a four-back now or now we're playing a three-back again. Yeah. I don't know, actually, and that's something that that is still not really, I think, uh, uh, sorted out for for Marco Rose, because he doesn't really know who he has and and how that works out for him. I think it's always good to prepare a couple of uh, different solutions, and uh, I th I mentioned now a couple of times that the team has all the tools for every possible lineup, yeah. and um, yeah, we'll we'll see. But I think. Uh, 
I think a, f a four back and uh, probably with Erling Haaland up front with three of offensive uh, players behind him. It seems a little bit to me that that would be the the most fitting one, but yeah. you never know. We'll see when when the team is is oh. full fully together and and worked a little bit on that. Yeah, I just find it super interesting um, with Yusufa Mukoko being back, and I can tell you guys out there, he's 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 just back in training and he's already so oh, yeah. full of energy. Oh. He did some extra, say half an hour yesterday. He is determined, um, just yeah. trying to score and score and score what he does best. So this guy is amazing. So is Erling Haaland, and we got the new guy Daniel Malen. So there are options. There are There's options, and we got Gio Reyna, who's probably right. wants to take the next step this right. season. Yeah. And so. It, so there are options for for multiple yeah. uh, systems on the pitch, and uh, yeah. right yeah. in front of us here we see Ansgar Knaus back. He's super fast. He had a breakthrough season, right. surprising breakthrough season last year. Yeah. So yeah, we're all curious. I reckon. Very curious. Yeah. yeah. So one question from China now. Oh, hello uh, China. Hello China, and uh, we we've sort of all already mentioned, but just to say it again, what's the weather in Switzerland? I mean, right now it's it's okay. Yeah. It's a little cloudy, but we see some blue uh, up in the sky. The the sun was out when we started uh, this uh, this stream, but just before that there was rain. So it's a lot of back and forth, and that's that's all. usual here in the mountains. As you never really know what it is. The 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 ten uh, the ten trainings camp before yeah. we had here in Bad Ragaz, they were usually mostly sunny, and yeah. then a couple uh, uh, rainy days. So far, we had a little bit more of the bad weather yeah. than, than the good one, but still, it's it's okay, and it's actually good weather for working. Yeah. So it's uh, it's not too hot. Exactly. It's yeah. not pouring cats and dogs at the moment. So yeah. so that's what you want as a as a as a player on the pitch when you really have to work hard. I mean, when you look back, this sort of blistering heat yeah. is that is that the hardest or? I would prefer it to to rain and, yeah. and thunderstorm and, and hail and, and stuff <laughs> i would prefer that but i'm i'm i i don't need more than 24 degrees okay uh, personally uh, or even less 22 maybe when yeah. i because i you know you're sweating and everything is sweaty and it's really dry and you you, you have to drink a lot so um I don't know. I would go for 22 degrees, a little yeah. bit of sun, a little bit of clouds, so yeah. you have some shade every now and then. That would be perfect. But as it is, it's it's absolutely good to yeah. to work under. And the thing about rain is, once you're soaked, you're soaked anyway. So can't get worse. Yeah, than that. and you. I mean, <laughs> I I trained and played in basically every weather. So hail, as I mentioned, yeah. thunderstorm, even uh, uh, snow. So yeah, yeah, you name it. I, yeah. I, we did it, and these guys too. Okay, thanks for that question, guys. In China, there's another one from China. How are the players enjoying their training in Switzerland? Can you actually enjoy a training <laughs> camp, Bobo? Uh, I mean, sometimes it's exhausting. And it is probably not the most uh, popular thing to do as a professional, the preseason. But it's important. And you can appreciate that, that you are working on the right stuff. And of course, you, you feel the development, yeah. so uh, physically and, and, and mentally as well. And that gives you a good feeling and some, some confidence. So um, yeah, you can enjoy. And I tell you that, the, the club does everything to make it as enjoyable as possible. It's a fantastic hotel we are living in. It's a, a very good pitch here. Yeah. Um, there are some. There is some off time. Uh, there is some some treatment physically, so these guys can relax. They have something to distract their minds. You know. True. So, so everything is is taken care of to make it as comfy as possible. But to be honest, preseason is not. For, for being comfortable. It's yeah. not a relaxing phase of the season. So right. it's not about that. But these guys can yeah, can 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 have that as well if they need to. And you can appreciate that you have to put in hard work to, to get something out of the season and that's why it's okay. Yeah. And for you guys out there, uh, something you cannot see is that once they're off the pitch, done with the training, people are heading on immediately to take care of the pitch. Yeah. So when they return this afternoon, they'll have the pitch back in really uh, pristine conditions. So yeah, this, these are really great conditions. And that's why we're returning year after year to this place. It is good. Because it is yeah, the full package. So there's another, uh, I think, interesting questions uh, from China, even mentions uh, our training in, in uh, our training center in uh, Brackel. So mm -hmm. someone who really knows okay. about, uh, about Dortmund. Compared with the training in Brackel, 
what is the biggest difference right here? So sort of in what they are actually doing, what they're actually training. I mean, we, we've got the fitness tent yeah. here. Yeah, So, but um, we have a, a fitness uh, gym, I would yeah. say, in, in Brackel. So yeah. the, the facilities are everything we have there, we have here as well. We yeah. even brought some some equipment. Uh, that means our equipment that we yeah. brought. So that that's basically the same. The main difference is that you, you are not going home afterwards. You're not distracted. Yeah. And that's, I don't mean it in a bad thing, but you're not yeah. distracted by, let's say, family and kids yeah. and or all you do is work on the pitch and then go home and relax to be to be uh, fully charged again once you go uh, into the next practice yeah. and uh, that's the difference so yeah. just the 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 routine the daily routine is different anything else is probably the same and we could you we could easily do that kind of stuff mm -hmm. in Brake. but then you would go back home into your environment and that yeah takes a little bit of focus away from yeah. from what you need to do here. So the focus here is really just <laughs> another <ball laughs> It's just uh, yeah, Mark Reus still yeah. trying to, to um, kick us. I place my bed right here. It's not going to be the last it's one. It's not going to be the last one. That's <laughs> just what he does. And that's why I love yeah. him so much. But I think the, the, the main difference, not compared to, to, to Brack or anything, is that the guys right now are building up the basics, training twice a day, yeah. and uh, yeah, as you said, in between trying to recharge as good as they can. And, and something, something, uh, something extra is they hang out all day. Mm. They're not going home and, you know, uh, part ways. They yeah. stay together. They, they play maybe some cards in the yeah. afternoon or some PlayStation or some, some yeah. table tennis or whatever, whatnot. So they get to know each other yeah. on a personal level as well. And that's bonding. Yeah, the new so guys that's blend another, in, right? Yeah, that's another part of the training camp is bonding, getting to know each other off the pitch as well, which helps on the pitch then again. So mm. um, that's, that's the difference. Yeah. Here's another good question from China, especially when we think of Michael Ross trying to shoot us <laughs> at the the whole time. Who's the best shooter in training? Yeah, I would, I would go for for Marco. His his technique and uh, is really good. I haven't seen Daniel Marlin shooting not so yet. far. We not don't yet. Know that yet. We don't know. There are a couple of guys. I think uh, they have a strong foot. It's sometimes yeah. it's raw power. Sometimes yeah, it's true. precision. Uh, Rafa Guerrero has a nice lefty. Yes, um, so, but Marco Ross. What from what I've seen, I mean, we, we played together for just one year, but I've seen him since 2012 at least uh, uh, in our colors. And what I've seen so far out of his right mm. foot and his there little he feet. Again. There he comes again <laughs> with the ball. It's dangerous. Uh, we have to be careful. And uh, But yeah, I would say he's amongst the best shooters, not just in our team, it's, uh, I would say in the league uh, at least. Mm. Here's a, here's a question we also sort of mentioned before. Would any player have extra self-training after routine, routine training sessions? Yes, yesterday, uh, I think we mentioned it, but I, I'm happy to, to say it again. Yeah. We had uh, Erling Haaland doing some extra session with Alexander Ziegler, who obviously used to be a striker himself. So they had various, um, well, sort of s things for him to solve to get a, a, a pass through, so yeah. to really run for the ball and then being challenged by a goalkeeper and others who just came in as a corner or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he was basically also working on his uh, headers. And on the other side of the pitch, and I think that was more or less spontaneous, we had Marco Rose himself serving the crosses to uh, both uh, Yusufa Mukoku and Stefan Tigges, and they were also working on, uh, yeah, sort of converting yeah, uh, corners yeah. and, and, and stuff the like finishing. that. And as I said, Yusufa Mokoku, full of power. That guy is charged. Oh, he was, I, I tell you what, I mean, I, I know Moki for, for some time as a, since I since I was with the under 19 team for, for five months. Yeah. And uh, he, he played for us at least. Um, and uh, I can tell you, he, he, all he wants to do is play football and score goals. And yeah. uh, he had a difficult time now where he was injured and he, yeah. he he thought he was already you know yeah. he should be on the pitch back and he was really asking and, and grinding and, and yeah. patiently waiting because he's so determined to to become better and to really uh, um, get out there and, and and do what he what he loves the most so uh, I could, he will not hold back yeah a bit uh, when he's on the pitch and when he when he can uh, lace up his football boots so yeah. it's it's really good to see but is patience the hardest bit yeah. It is right, because, right. especially after injury, all you want to do is 
depending on how long the injury was and how serious all you want to do is be out there as fast as possible yeah. but sometimes uh you know you think you're ready but you're not and i i know a little bit of that myself and uh I, I came back early uh, once or twice in my career and the, the result was that I was right back out with injury. Oh. So sometimes, uh, and that's hard. I mean, uh, patient, you don't want to lose the connection to the team. You don't want to, you know, True. lose your, your spot if you have one already. And so, so it, you want to be fast, but on the other side, the, the, the staff will take care that you not go out there before you're really ready and before everything is really healthy again. And, and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. Talking about healthy, um, Marco Royce, he skipped the Euros to fully recover. Right. And there's another question from uh, China. How is Royce feeling after recovering from a tiring season? Well, as I said, he had a, a sort of interviews uh, a few days back and that question was actually asked and his answer is well he's feeling great i mean he's yeah. doing the full preseason now i mean that's 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 new yeah. <laughs> for exactly. him it's, it's been it, a while it it, it sounds uh, uh, odd but actually yes he, he's, he's been so injury ridden that it is a yeah. good thing for him with this important season coming up because as he said the team The, the 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 way it is built up right now with the new training uh, trainers team with the new head coach they are aiming high yeah. so it's the best time for him to focus on his work here and to lead this team to hopefully some more silverware right, right. and and uh, we we talked about the the last weeks of last season and how good they were and and a big part of that was the performance of Mark Royce in yeah. those kind of weeks True. and uh, so he is not just the captain and important for the team uh, in that uh, in that uh, matter. He's on the pitch, just a, a great football player when he's really fully fit, and uh, being prepared with a full preseason helps you really to right. to carry through the whole season with right. A, with the right momentum. And uh, he's at a certain age where he needs to consider uh, what's best for his body and what, what helps him to, to be the best Mark Royce on the pitch uh, yeah. through a, for a long season. And that was obviously the right decision uh, regarding his, his condition now, his, what he's feeling now. So it's um, I'm I'm happy he he made it's, yeah. it was not an easy decision probably for him yeah. to to skip that uh, tournament because no, since wasn't. he is in a certain yeah. age there won't be too many mm. uh, tournaments av be available for yeah. him and uh, so it was a tough decision but he did it for his club for his body obviously first mm. but for the club BVB and that's where I really uh, tip my hat to him and, yeah. and say uh, biggest of respect. Masaj Melsa just, just passed. Yes. Yeah. He's also back. It's good to see him. He was working with the ball yesterday. Yeah, it's really good to see him getting closer to to a normal football. It's yeah. he's been out now for quite some time, and for a uh, year, man. Yeah, for it's, it's long. Year. It's long. I tell you, but I, I I've been there, so I know yeah. how he feels, and it's just good to see him back. And uh, he extended his contract really quietly and has another season yeah. to to maybe come back and and show what he's uh, what he still can can yeah. do and still have, has left in the tank. Yeah, I think it's it's fair to say that every BVB supporter out there yeah. worldwide is crossing I mean, his or her fingers for. Come on, Marcel I don't know. He, how long is he with us now? I, yeah. I don't even know. It's yeah. it is, it's more than a decade yeah. de easily, and uh, so he's been there when I when I joined the club in 2008. Yeah. He's been there, so we had some really good years together. Now we're neighbors. I, I really oh, wish really? him all the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's like a couple hundred meters away from my house. <laughs> it's his house. Yeah. yeah. How is he doing in the garden? Everything? <laughs> good? Yeah. I don't know how much of it he does, but it looks it looks decent. It looks okay. it looks good. Yeah. yeah. You you have to know everyone out there in Germany. That's that's quite a thing that your that your garden is. Yeah. Is, you is always looking. look to <laughs> you always look to to uh, your neighbor's garden. Marco Reus is he Marco can't Reus stop. Is, he can't uh, stop it. And right? I, I couldn't see what it was. <laughs> he threw his jersey. His yeah, training was just jersey. A bib, yeah. But I thought it was a ball. <laughs> oh, no, that would be no no no. But coming back to Marco, I think if. You You look back at the at the cup final for yeah. me he was uh, sort of the unsung hero because he was Absolutely. involved yeah, in three yeah, or yeah, four yeah, goals yeah, yeah, yeah. he stole the ball all the time oh, i mean campbell is probably still having nightmares because of yeah. him um, <laughs> he didn't know where he was yeah, coming yeah, from yeah, so true. It, true. It, that 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 was really being a captain and really being there when it when 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 you yeah. need to be there yeah and that's the marco royce we want to see throughout a whole season now 
and consistently consistency is the word there again yeah. for him as well and uh, but a, a good preseason and a, a good rest in between seasons yeah. can can help you uh, yeah. achieve that so yeah I so hope. thank you so much for all of your questions uh, from Asia that, that our half hour is almost done but I think because they are about to start yeah. a training game right now we're looking onto the action on the pitch. pitch. Yeah, it's a little 10 on 10. What they're playing now, uh, only one goal, a run rear goal. There's some, some smaller goals on, on the other side. And uh, what we know is that uh, Marc Rose, uh, Marc Rose, the coach, uh, likes his team to really chase and, and press. So this is probably a little bit more about playing against the ball than with it. And we have quite here on our side we have Daniel Mahn involved playing more as a as a winger at the moment as you guys know if you read some stuff about him in Eindhoven he used to play as a central striker or sort of as a as a winger as well so yeah. he can play in uh, different positions and show what he's got there's a little bit of an opening since uh jane sancho left so yeah <laughs> there's some, some <laughs> true a it's a gap. bit of a statement yeah uh, there's a little gap for him to maybe push himself in and and hope and and take that spot and take it over mm. i mean there's a there's a certain should we have a little bit that way yeah no worries So guys, as I mentioned before, our 30 minutes are almost over. So we're coming back. And basically trying to say thank you. Thanks for joining me, Oval. Thank Always you a very pleasure. Much. Thanks for having me. And uh, well, keep your eyes on our channels because I think we might be on air again from Switzerland in the next days and give you more insights from what's happening here. There's so more to come, definitely. Yeah, exactly, yeah. but from now, thanks from Switzerland. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.